legendary Japanese adventurer, Umura Naomi, was still young, just 43, when he disappeared in 1984, attempting a solo winter ascent of Denali in Alaska. Always pushing the limits of what was possible, he tackled the highest peaks and traversed the harshest landscapes, often alone. Amazing and unparalleled list of achievement in his short life, this year marks the 80th anniversary of Umera's birth, offering a fitting opportunity to reflect on the legacy of the pioneering figure. Umera was born in 1941 in the farm hamlet of Kokufu, now Toyoka, in the Tajimi region of northern Hyogo Prefecture. The youngest of seven children, he grew up surrounded by an abundant nature of Tajimi an area also known for his harsh winters. He spent his formative years in bucolic bliss, helping on the farm, including grazing the family herd of the Jimmy cattle and romping along the banks of the Maruyama River. A typical youth in most respects, he had a gentle, unassuming manner that hid a strong competitive streak and desire to stand out from the crowd. Hardened by the heavy winter snowfall, and rigid seasonal winds that blow off the sea of Japan, he demonstrated as an adult of resourcefulness, iron fortitude, and unflagging work ethic characteristics of inhabitants of Japanese snow-heavy regions. His quest for adventure began with the mountain climbing while studying agriculture at Meiji University in Tokyo, where he was uncomfortably with dense concrete cityscapes. After graduating from university, Umera shunned the path of his job-seeking peers and set off to travel the world. Boarding a ship to Los Angeles with a mere $110 in his pocket. Over the next four and a half years, he would circumnavigate the globe in search of new challenges. In Southern California, he saved up enough money doing part-time jobs to travel to France, where he would return intermittently to replenish his funds by working long days at a ski resort before heading out to another venture. Almost immediately, he began racking up records. He joined guide Pemba Tenzin in making the first successful ascent of the 7,916-meter Himalayan mountain in Gojumbakang, a feat done as part of the expedition by the Alpine Club of Maiji University, and completed his first solo journey by raft down on the Amazon River, a trip of some 6,000 kilometers. With an insatiable appetite for adventure, Umera chipped away at the world's seven summits, conquering peaks like Mont Blanc, then considered the tallest in Europe, Africa's Kilimanjaro and South America's Aconcagua, and repeatedly made forays into the polar regions. Umera later explained that he was also shy and slight standing, 1.63 meters, when he joined the university mountaineering club hoping the pursuit would boost his confidence and physical stature. Then an agriculture bureaucrat in 1964, he was selected for a university expedition to the Himalayas. He returned to quit his career. Intent on climbing the world's most famous mountains, he earned enough from fruit picking in California to fly to France, where he worked at a ski resort near Mont Blanc, which he climbed solo in July 1966. He scaled Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa in October and Aconcagua in Argentina in February 1968. He sailed solo for almost 4,000 miles down the Amazon. Umera was captivated by the polar regions. During his first outing in the Arctic, he embraced the native culture and language while living in the indigenous Inuit communities. His laid-back nature endearing him to residents and allowing him to blend in almost effortlessly. In 1972, he spent a long stint in the northern Greenland settlement of Sierra Paluk, where under the instruction of locals, he learned how to drive a dog sledge and other native skills necessary to survive alone in the unforgiving environment. In April 1973, he tested his nascent abilities setting out a dog sled on the road trip journey along the northwest coast of the island. Covering a distance of some 3,000 kilometers on his own. His next outing, a 12,000 kilometer solo trek across the Arctic from Greenland to Alaska through the north coast of Canada, taxed his polar survival skills to the very limit. 
Omara set off on a grueling journey in December 1974 and spent the next year and a half navigating the frozen rugged expanse. His arrival in Alaska in May 1976 was a major triumph. His success against all odds solidifying his reputation as a world-class explorer. In 1970, he was the first member of the Japanese team of 39 climbers to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Umera's next adventure was living with Inuit in the Canadian Arctic, where he learned survival techniques and a little of the language. Wearing bearskin trousers, sealskin mittens and boots, and driving an Inuit sledge, he traveled solo for 3,200 kilometers along the coast of Greenland, then 12,000 kilometers solo from Greenland across the Canadian Arctic to Alaska. It was estimated Umera lost 50 dogs to drowning, overwork, and dogfights on his Arctic excursions. On his polar trek, Umera had to unload and backpack supplies over 10 meter high ridges, then pull the dogs and sledges over. Drinking water had to be melted on the kerosene stove. Every evening, he ate raw meat with his dogs. Well, we must say this guy really loved taking risks. On the fourth day, a polar bear invaded his camp at his supplies and poked his nose against the sleeping bag where Umera lay frozen still. The bear returned the next day when Imora shot it dead, feeding the meat to his dogs. On the 35th day, Umera was walking by a raw of breaking ice and walked to find the floor had calmed on and shut it. He and his dogs were stranded on a 100 meter square island of ice. The next morning, he found a meter wide ice bridge and rushed to safety. Another day, when six dogs fell through the ice, Umera risked his life to drag them out, patting them dry with his wool and fur mittens before they froze to death. An account of his expedition appeared on the National Geographic cover in September 1978. By then, Umera had trekked the mountain 3.5 km west of the inland ice cap in Greenland, again alone by dog sledge in August 1978. Umera vanished in February 1984 after becoming the first person to make a solo winter climb up Denali or Mount McKinley in Alaska. In a radio conversation, he told Japanese photographers that he made it to the top and descended back 5,500 meters. He planned to reach the base camp in another two days. He never made it. One of the almost 100 climbers to perish on the mountain since 1938. Well. That brings us to the end of the video. Umera was a dreamer and lived and followed his dreams. If he never made it up the mountain, may his soul rest in peace. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching.